Welcome back to another video. My name is Abby and today we are talking about shadow work, what it is and how to do it. Now, if you're new to this channel and you like videos like this, you want some more, hit that subscribe button, click the bell. It'll let you know as soon as new videos come out. And if you love this video, you like this video, you want to support this channel, a great way to do so is simply click that like button. It really helps to spread this information. So back to the video, what is shadow work? Essentially, it is part of you. Everyone has a shadow. It is the part of you that basically you're unaware of, you're unconscious of. You go throughout your day and you have constructed the version of you who you think you are, the version of you and how you navigate the world, the version of you that is seen and loved by others, and then there's a part of you that you've basically put in your shadow. You suppress it. You try to detach from it. And I think it's important to understand and to talk about why this happens. That nobody just sees a part of themselves and say, no, I hate that. I don't like that. We learn to want to distance ourselves. We learn that we need to suppress that or hide that. It's not something that we're born to do. We look around, we look at our environment and we see, oh, this is acceptable, this is unacceptable, or at least we reason that that's the case. Everyone is a baby at one point in their life and when you are a baby, you are completely dependent upon your caregivers to keep you alive, to get you food, to change you, to keep you safe from any sort of danger, from falling, everything, right? You are dependent upon them. So it is important to fit in your original culture, which is that primary family that you had growing up. As you're growing up, you're gonna be very aware of what is acceptable in that culture and what is unacceptable in that culture. And so since your goal is survival as a child, your number one goal, keep living in this family, this structure, whatever it looked like for you, being accepted by them, they are gonna take care of you. So you want to stay in alignment with them. So there are parts of you, you might have seen your caregivers or siblings or whoever it was, maybe make a judgment or maybe put down stuff. You know, we don't do that. Our family doesn't do that. And then you take that, you process it and you're like, okay, they don't do it, I can't do it. And so this is oftentimes how shadows can develop. There can be a lot of other ways, but this is, primarily, in my opinion, some big ways in which they develop because you might not be aware of what's in your shadow right now because it developed and it was disowned or tried to disown, put in your unconscious so long ago. You disassociated or tried hard to so that you could stay in that because the alternative was, okay, actually, I want to do that. And then you're outside of the safety box. And because you don't want to live on your own as a four or five year old or whatever the age was, you choose to stay with the safety of that culture. You choose to ignore, repress, deny, disassociate with parts of you. And what would that sound like? What are things, what are, what can shadow aspects of you be? So it can be about getting attention. It can be about money. It could be about taking care of yourself. It could be about being a nice person. It could be about what it means to be angry, what it means to be more aggressive in the world. All of these things you can have in your shadow. And why do you care, right? Why should you watch this video? Why should you continue on and understand how to do this shadow work? Because as Carl Jung said, until you make your unconscious, until you bring light and awareness to your conscious of your shadow, your unconscious is your shadow until you bring that unconscious aspect of you to your conscious mind, it will run your life and you'll call it fate. You will go through the world not knowing deep down why you're making decisions, not knowing and understanding why these things keep happening, why you keep finding these people in the outside world and their external reality that keep driving you crazy or messing you up or whatever the case is. When you start seeing repeated situations and no matter who the person is, that same dynamic, the same feeling is coming up in you. As that starts to happen, you can know that it is something in your unconscious that is trying to come up because you keep setting up and finding structures and situations that are making you feel the same way. This is a good thing, even though it can be difficult, but the reason it's good is because it's gonna help you bring that unconscious 
to your conscious mind so that you can choose something new and you can have a new version of yourself and live in a new external circumstance. So big things with shadow is you've made a moral judgment about this thing, that this thing is wrong. And again, that comes from those primary caregivers. And I think it's interesting because the etymology of this word shadow comes from an old English word to screen, to shield from attack. And another one actually meant ghost, which I think is really interesting because I do think that your shadow is like a ghost that haunts you, you can't see but it is messing with your life because really it's the part of you that you don't see. And actually originally in Latin, it comes from a word meaning darkness. So you are actually in the dark about an aspect of you. And until you are able to see yourself and accept yourself fully, you'll continually create situations so that you can consciously see yourself. So how do you do this work? Well, one thing is to start to see how common it is. I'll give you a personal example. Oftentimes what you see when you're seeing your shadow or a good way to see it is if somebody really annoys you or something happens and you walk into a room, maybe you get introduced to a new coworker or some, a friend of a friend and you're like, God, that person is so annoying. Or maybe you get really angry at them. You have this really visceral reaction to them for no reason at all. Well, that's a good way to see that something outside of you, you're seeing in somebody else and you're judging it in them because you judge it in yourself. And remember the shadow, there's been a moral judgment on a way of being or an action or whatever it is. When you do this, it's wrong. So when you see somebody else doing it, you have this really intense reaction because they can't do that. Why? Because you're judging yourself originally. So if you can't do it, they can't do it. And an example is uh, attention. I used to see people who would go into a room and be really loud. I'm like, God, this asshole, like who cares what you're saying? Why are you so loud? Why do you want to give so much attention? It's like, spoiler alert. That's how I am. But I was suppressing that in me because I thought it wasn't right. I thought it was selfish. I thought it was a rude way to be in the world. Why did I think that? Because when I was younger, I looked around and I took that information that I was seeing from my primary culture and I'm like, okay, you have to be humble. You have to be quiet. And that's the way that you move in the world if you're good. And when you're good, you get love. So I'm like, okay, even though I really love to talk, I make videos for people so they can watch them because I want to talk, I want to share. That's something that makes me feel more alive. I, for a long time, judge myself for it. And I tried so hard to keep it down. Only do it in certain ways, but don't do it too much. Don't do it in this way. All these moral judgments of myself. So when I saw somebody out in the world getting too much attention, I had very strong reactions in my body and became very irritated at people. Loud mouth, show off. That was the big one for me is, God, look at this person trying to show off. Guess who really likes to show off? Me. So that was one way I started to see my shadow is certain starting to look at my reactions to people or situations or circumstances. When I had those really strong reactions, I knew right away, oh, I'm judging me. That's how I treat myself. So if you're watching this video and you are wondering, how can I start doing some shadow work? No one has to know. You're the only one that needs to know really, because as it comes to your awareness, then you can start integrating it, accept that part of yourself, learn to love that part of yourself. And as you do, you won't have these extreme reactions because now when I see somebody out and about in the world, they're showing off, they're wanting a lot of attention. I actually feel close to them because I'm like, oh, me and that person, we both like the same thing. We have a common interest. So that connects us. I feel close. I'm now rooting for that person. because I'm like, ah, oh, that's the stuff I like to do. And part of me integrating my shadow gave me the ability to start making videos because it's okay. It's good. It is valuable to the world for me to go off that urge of get attention, put it out there, make noise, show off. This is it. This is me. This is me integrating that shadow part of myself, seeing the value in it, no longer judging other people. Why? Because I stopped judging myself. And one way to do this is actually by the work of Byron Katie. She has a worksheet called Judge Your Neighbor Worksheet. And basically you can download it off the internet. I believe she actually even has a free app. Uh, I'll try to find it and put it in the description box below. But Judge Your Neighbor app is amazing because basically she's like, all right, 
whatever it is, maybe it's a, a person and y'all have the situation and she's like, just go to town. She's this lovely, so such a sweet older woman. And she's like, okay, just don't hold back. And so, I mean, the first time I did it, I'm like, this is awesome. I'm just gonna really, yeah, like, let's see, let's like get all this information to prove that that person is doing it wrong, that they are in the wrong. You go down, you go through it, and there's a series of different things she does. And in the end, it basically shows that it's you. And it's a way to put all of these feelings, kind of get them out in your external world and then give yourself the ability to read them back. And my best understanding of what happens is that that unconscious is able to work its way out and really starts going as you give it permission to freely flow. Then you're able to read it and see it with your conscious brain and start to integrate it. And again, that, is, that exercise is called judge your neighbor. Another way to release the tension and the block and resistance from your shadow and bring that unconscious to your conscious is the work from Carolyn Elliott, which I've really been doing a lot of lately. And that basically is to look for the benefit or for that thrill, that perk of what you're getting from whatever it is that's happening. So if you're in, living in scarcity, if it's an amount of money and you're just feeling, oh man, you're working so hard, you're trying so much, but no matter what happens, you don't, you only have a certain amount of money or you're barely making it, no matter what you do. Potentially it's a relationship and you work so hard and you're really trying and then people leave you. So whatever it is, you basically ask yourself, what could you unconsciously be benefiting from this? How could this actually be making an unconscious part of you happy? even though consciously it is bringing you suffering. So I have used this work to help me identify when I start getting worried and moving into a scarcity mindset, oh, what I'm really doing unconsciously is playing out an idea of being a victim. Because when I was little, I reasoned what I thought I was seeing that when you're helpless, it's actually when people come to help you. So if I am helpless, if I'm a victim, people will come, they'll give me that attention, they'll give me the love and the support that I'm looking for, rather than saying, oh, I can help myself and I can do this, that there's actually no lack at all. The one thing I'm doing is actually moving into this victim mindset because it makes me feel supported. I'm looking for love and affection, and so when I'm a victim, that's when I get it. So that part of me, that unconscious part, that shadow part is like, ah, oh, whew, I'm getting the thing. When my conscious brain is saying, oh my God, I'm so stressed, X, Y, Z, all these bad things are gonna happen. So when I've started integrating, oh, I'm just looking for that. That's okay. That part of me needs that. And then I can go in and see what's really happening underneath the surface and embrace that, address those specific needs. And then I can more wholly see how and who I'm being in the world. And again, we go back to Dr. Joe, the electromagnetic signature, what I'm sending out through my thoughts and my feelings at an unconscious level. Also too, Neville Goddard, where is my attention? Where is my intention going? If it's not unconscious level going towards that end, that desire, that wish fulfilled that I want, then it unconsciously is going to that other goal of scarcity, of rejection, of abandonment. And I also have had those in relationships in my past. I continued to find people who would reject me, who would abandon me. Why? Because deep down I thought, oh, that I wasn't good enough, that that's what happened, that love was associated with loss. And so unconsciously I was playing that out. And as I started to see, oh, that's actually fulfilling something unconscious in me. And it's actually giving me a joy, even though it's hard for my conscious brain to understand because it's bringing me a lot of pain and suffering on the external surface. Once I started to incorporate that and give that awareness and attention and nurture that and give those needs and meet those needs, find that in the world, realize what I was feeling and thinking at an unconscious level, bring that up, integrate it. And then I'm able to act and be in the world in a more holistic and authentic way. And I've seen my external circumstances in reality dramatically change by understanding, by starting to see who I am, not who I think I am, not who I wanna be, not who I suppress myself to be, but letting all that come up. And it is a constant process and it's an evolving process, being gentle with yourself, being understanding, 
It will help you see all of you as you start to see that darkness. And all that is, is bringing your consciousness to that unconscious, allowing that to come up, giving yourself permission. You're not bad. You taking away that moral judgment and realizing you are safe, that you can be exactly who you are, exactly who you were meant to be in this life. That is actually a benefit to this world. The world is a more valuable place because of your contribution, because of your authentic expression in this world. So as you start to get into that, looking at the work of Byron Katie, looking at the work of Carolyn Elliott to get you more aware of your shadow, as you do this, your life will change, meaning that as you see yourself differently, what you see in the world will dramatically change. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, hit subscribe. If you haven't done so already, like this video, and I'll see you on the next one.